Welcome aboard the Biotrain. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a Bohr model. But to start off, let's just quickly review the atomic particles or the particles that make up an atom. Now, obviously, there's more particles than just protons, neutrons, and electrons. But for our level, we're going to focus on those three particles. So protons, they have a positive charge. They're found in the nucleus of an atom, and they have an atomic mass of one. AMU, atomic mass unit. Neutrons, they are neutrally charged, which means they have no charge. They are found in the nucleus of the atom along with the protons in that dense nucleus. And they also have the same mass as a proton, one AMU, atomic mass unit. Electrons, the third particle, they are negatively charged. They are found in energy levels outside in the space outside the dense nucleus and they have insignificant mass. So let's get into talking about how to make a Bohr model to represent these particles. Before we get started, let me just say that these Bohr models are very primitive. Our understanding of atoms and how to represent, especially the electrons around the outside of the nucleus, has greatly advanced since Bohr models were first used. It doesn't mean that it's still not useful for beginners in chemistry, to understand how to make a Bohr model and how to represent an atom with a Bohr model. So let's start by making a Bohr model for the element carbon. What you want to do is represent the nucleus with a square. Now inside that nucleus you can either put the element symbol or you can actually list the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. If we were going to do that we'd have to go look on the periodic table and figure out how many protons a carbon atom has. The number of protons is equal to the atomic number, which in this case is six. So this carbon atom has six protons. How many neutrons does it have? Well, if you remember, you have to round off the atomic mass. So that would be 12. Then you subtract the number of protons from the atomic mass, because we know the atomic mass is the protons and the neutrons. And that tells us that there are six neutrons. So the only last thing we need to know is how many electrons are there in a carbon atom. And we know that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So if we know there's six positively charged protons, we know that there will be six negatively charged electrons. The next thing we need to do is figure out how the electrons are arranged in the energy levels outside the nucleus. So we need to know a few rules. The rules get complicated for arranging electrons and energy levels when you get into the heavier elements, but for lighter elements, we're going to use these rules. The first energy level holds two electrons, the second energy level holds up to eight electrons, and the third energy level holds eight electrons. This works well for what we need to do to uh, learn how to make a Bohr model. So let's distribute our six electrons into the appropriate energy levels. You always start with the first energy level, and that holds a maximum of two. We have six, so we're going to put two in the first energy level, but we still have four more to go for the second energy level. So we've got to draw a second energy level. And then we're going to distribute the last four. Now, because it holds eight, I like to go around and do one, two, three, four. And then if I had more electrons in the second energy level, I would start to double them up. So that is a Bohr model for carbon. So this Bohr model of carbon shows that there are six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. It also shows the arrangement of the six electrons in the energy level outside of the nucleus, two electrons being in the first energy level and then four electrons being in the second energy level. One of the things that a Bohr model is really good at is showing the number of electrons in the outer energy level. The outer energy level contains what are called the valence electrons and it's the number of valence electrons that determines how an atom likes to interact and bond with other atoms. Now let's make a Bohr model for oxygen. Let's find a number of protons, neutrons, and electrons before we start. The number of protons is eight so I immediately know that there's eight electrons. Then I just have to round off the atomic mass 
So that would be 16 minus 8, and in this case it's 8. The number of protons and neutrons is not always the same, but in a lot of the lighter elements it ends up being the same. So, drawing a Bohr model for oxygen, we start by representing the nucleus. Let's go ahead and show our protons and neutrons in the nucleus because we know that there are eight of each. Now we have eight electrons to distribute into the outer energy levels. Remember, first holds two, second energy level holds eight, and third energy level holds eight. Start with the first. We obviously have enough to fill the first energy level. One, two, we're going to need a second energy level. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is a Bohr model for oxygen. Let's do one more, sodium. I already have the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's do it. Draw the nucleus, protons 11, neutrons 12. We have 11 electrons. Draw the first energy level, one, two. We need a second energy level, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we filled up the second energy level. We need a third energy level to hold that last electron. That is sodium. I hope that helps you stay comfortably seated on the bio train.